Naming your emotions it opens the door to invite God to change those emotions. Amen, family? It absolutely does. This is what we're doing. We're talking about, this isn't, we're not being unspiritual. We're saying, let's learn how God made us so that we can effectively live the, God, the life God made us to live. Amen? Your emotions are valid, and it's not something spiritual to pretend like you don't feel those feelings. Right? They're there. God made you to be a deeply complicated and capable emotional being. That is how God made you. And because your emotions are valid, but they're also temporary. They're, they're temporary, and that's really important. We're not going to make permanent decisions based on temporary feelings, right? We're not going to make permanent decisions based on temporary feelings. I want you to think about this. Proverbs, or Psalm 35, what does it say? Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. Valid. But temporary. And you see all throughout Scripture that, that, that people express these deep and vast emotions. Lamentations is one of them. And, and you don't see people invalidate their feelings. Sometimes you see a rebuke come in there. But they experience their feelings, and then, uh, then joy comes in the morning. And so, so when you're feeling down, you know, you're not going to make permanent decisions based on that moment of feeling down, right? Um, you know, when you're, when you're not going to make permanent conclusions either. Okay, okay, I, I'm, feel, I'm mad at my husband, and so all men are pigs, right? Um, you know, somebody at church offended me, and so all churches are horrible. I don't know, maybe you feel for a moment like quitting on God. Don't make a permanent decision like that off of this, this momentary feeling. You know, maybe you feel like, I don't know, you're having a fight with your spouse, and, and you feel like running out the door and just drink, getting a bottle of Jack and drinking yourself silly. Don't make that decision off this temporary emotion. We, uh, we talk about this in counseling a little bit. We talk about how God values sober-mindedness, right? Um, God values sober-mindedness, right? We're, we're not gonna, nobody's going to do this, right? But, but because it doesn't honor God. We're not going to go out and get drunk or high and, and because it doesn't honor God, right? But the reality is, is if you did it, you're not going to say, hey, pal, let's go get higher than the ki- a kite and make really life-changing decisions, right? Right off of this temporary thing, you're not going to go and make life-changing decisions based off this temporary thing. But you're not going to do it anyways because it doesn't honor God. But the point is, is then, there, then it's, it, there's depth to it, right? So like we talk about this in counseling. When you're raging, you're not sober-minded either, right? When you're raging, you're drunk with anger, right? When you're depressed, I don't mean this in a shameful way, you're, you're drunk on sorrow or hopelessness or loneliness, right? So you're not sober-mindedness, so, so why would you, if you wouldn't go and tell somebody to go get plastered and, and decide if they're going to marry somebody or not, um, you also wouldn't tell somebody like, okay, hey, let's, let's make this permanent decision while you're depressed. Let's make this permanent decision while you're raging, right? Sober-mindedness is something God values because then we can make better godly decisions, amen? So your feelings are valid, but they're not permanent, Right? And in your darkest times, you, you might feel like, like you might feel like life's not worth it. Let's, let's go there. You might feel like in your darkest moment, like life's not worth it. Remember, you are battling a spiritual enemy who wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? Um, that's absolutely true. You have a battle, uh, an enemy who wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And I want you guys to remember this. Remember this. Remember this. Remember this. He is not sitting there leaning against a wall just passively hoping you fail. So, you know, like he's, like, he's not sitting there like, okay, I hope they trip so I can laugh at him. No, he wants to slaughter you. He wants to obliterate you. He would take joy in your misery. He wants your destruction, right? You're fighting a real spiritual enemy who's not passively hoping you fail. He's actively seeking your destruction. And in your darkest times, that enemy might just be whispering, hey, the world would be better off without you. The world would be better off without you. And, and in that time, you might even feel like that's true. Right? You might even feel like that's true. Those feelings are temporary. We're not going to make a permanent decision based off those temporary feelings. You might feel like it's true. But I will tell you this. It is never, ever, ever, ever true. It is never true. Amen, family? It is never true. God did not make a mistake when he made you. He did not mess up when he created you. He has plans for you, and they're wonderful plans. You are fearfully and what? Wonderfully made. And, and what, did, what does scripture tell us? That God has good works prepared for you that he made for you since before you were born. 
God didn't mess up. And so you may feel that way, but it's temporary and it's never, ever true. The second thing, situation, the second truth I want you to remember is this, is, is your situation may feel hopeless, but with God, there is always hope. Always hope. What's funny is sometimes you feel like life could be better without you, and that's not true. But what's funny is with God, there's always hope, and sometimes that feels like it's not true, but it is true. Do you see how we can kind of get those flipped around? It's always true that we have hope with God. And this is why Jeremiah is so amazing. Lamentations 3, verse 20, and then verse 21, he says this. He says, my soul is downcast. My soul is downcast. My soul is downcast. Then he says, yet I call this to mind. I call this to mind. I feel hopeless. I feel depressed. I'm walking in darkness. I have no hope. Yet I call this to mind. And because I call this to mind... Therefore, I have hope. He says this, verse 21. He says, therefore, I have hope. So he's in the middle of this darkness, dark moment. And what he does, he calls to mind the goodness of God. He says, then verse 22, he says, because of the Lord's great love, we're not consumed. For his compassion never fails. They're, they're new every morning. Amen? Hope comes in the? Right? And in the middle of his darkness, he's just, he just claiming, great is your faithfulness, God. Great is your faithfulness.